Hi, this is a message for Australia from James Dargan, who's an Aboriginal elder in Wollongong, New South Wales. He was sharing with half a dozen of us on a Zoom call on the 23rd of August this year. He starts off by talking about the time he went to Canberra to speak to the Senate with others uh, about issues of mothers and fathers and children. They're taking out the family law amendment, the rights for fathers to their children and, and uh, mothers. So I went with Warwick Marsh and um, went to put a submission in to say this is wrong. So I got to speak to the senators. The first thing I said to the senators, I said, good evening, my beloved senators. You know, and because the Lord put on my heart, they said that um, the Lord put on my heart that they are they are his children. So I had to honour and respect the senators, not for what they do, but uh, for who they are as 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 children of God. So and um, so I shared my testimony about being abused. Sexually, physically, mentally, um, you know, I'm helping mothers, single mothers, single fathers. Um, hopefully, I'll be, go and I said, I hopefully I'll go to jail and help single fathers, you know, um, to become fathers. And uh, and I said that, um, that, you know, there might be a few bunch, um, you know, rotten grapes in the bunch, but we're not all rotten. And so I was sharing, you know, from an Indigenous man and and also standing up, not just for Indigenous people, but for non-Indigenous men and fathers. And um, everybody in the room was blown away. So, yeah, I spoke about not only children, but fathers and mothers. You know, the Lord put on my heart that, you know, respect and love, you know, because usually when you come up to senators, you ask him why are they not doing their job? Why are they doing this and doing that? But nobody respects them for who they are as God's children, which I did. I would come up to Cairns then, and I went to, two days ago, I went to the community of um, Yaraba in Queensland, and, um, and I met a father, Father Les, I've written a um, yeah, uh, Father Les, and, and they had a men's group, and I shared my, and the men shared their testimony with me about where they came from and, and, and what God had done. I took my chauffeur, I blew it in an Anglican church, so when I blew that chauffeur in the Anglican church, all the men felt the power of Jesus, the Holy Spirit in that room, and so. As the men were sharing their testimony and that, I shared mine. I was the last, and I said to the men, I said, my beloved brothers, I said, I grew up being physically, sexually, phys uh, mentally, and racially abused as a child, you know. And I said to the men, you know, I said, look, I said, I was tied to a bed. My brother was tied up to the house. My brother was put on a stove. So I copped a lot of abuse through 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 my uh, father's wife, and then I was, and then I told the men I left home when I was 15, 14 years old because I couldn't take the abuse anymore, and so I said I went and seen my mother, and then yeah, then I got abused by my mother. I said she put a knife up to my chest, and you know I said to the men I said. To my mother, I said, if you weren't my mother, I'd pick you up and I'll throw you through that window. I said, my mother used to smash me out of the head with bottles of beer. And so the abuse and everything. But, you know, I said, the Lord took that unforgiveness out of my heart and replaced forgiveness and I forgive. I said, I still see my stepmother today and I still respect her and love her. And, and, and all the men. A couple of the men cuddled me and they cried. One man said to me, one brother from Yarrabah said, my brother, I've been praying for God to send someone to us. And he said to you. Um, and one brother said, you know, because I said to him, I said, I had to ask for forgiveness to my non, uh, you know, to the white people. I said, I had to ask to, for the white people to forgive me for what I have said, what I have done. 
I said, even my Pacific Islander brothers, I said, I'd ask them to forgive me for what I have said and done to them. And I have said, even my Indigenous brothers and sisters, I'd ask them to forgive me for what I've said about them and their families. And and, and one of the, um, the men from Yarrabah said, we have to ask the white people to forgive us for what we have done and what we have said. And I said to the men, I said, my brothers, my beloved brothers, God has put you here for a purpose. You are not a mistake. We're not at the head anymore. We're the tail. I'm not the tail. We're not the tail anymore, but we're the head. God wants us to stand up as, as Aboriginal people of this nation to, to, to bring forgiveness and unity and love. And once we do that, we've got to do it in our family first because a lot of, you know, even my my family, a lot of Indigenous families are separated, you know, with conflicts and, you know, and, and so we have to share this with our with our um, families. And I said to my brothers, I said there was a dozen of them, I said, now you can share this with your community. I said, when we share this with our families and the community, we can bring this nation together for revival. And until then, we can't just go to the front yard and tap white people when our backyard is still dirty. And so they, they and most of the men were just, you know, tears, emotion, how, you know, how I went through this torture and punishment since I was a child and to forgive and to love all people of all colour, of all nationalities. And so, yeah, and and I, which I didn't realise that in Yarrabah community, I didn't realise there was over 4,000 people in that community. The message of forgiveness hit their men's hearts. God hit their hearts. I said, this is a message from God. He wants his people back, but they've got to come back to forgive. They've got to come back to, to unite with, and they've got to come back to love one another. So... Yeah, so, and the Yarrabah people, they said, you know, I'm welcome to go back and stay there. They welcome in their community. Then after that, I met a, an elderly couple from Awuja Wuja, which is up, I don't know where that is, but they asked me to come up there and share forgiveness, unity and love in their community, a community of 600. So, so yeah, and uh, on Saturday, hopefully I'll be interviewed by... 92.3 FM Vision Christian Radio Station to share this message on the radio for, for all, all the people of all this nation. But I, 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 help, I just want to I'm share this message for our people because God wants to soften people's hearts because our, our people's hearts are hard. So, and, and, and I'm not giving up. I'm going to keep going and spread this message. I mean, if they men of Yarrabah can receive and God hit their heart with this message, and surely it will hit the, hit the hearts of many Indigenous communities. And I went to Mossman Gorge, an Aboriginal community up there, and shared the message. And women crying, and they love the message. We have to, we have to forgive. And, and I said to the Aboriginal communities up here, I said, the biggest thing the devil's doing before... Jesus come back, he said he's grabbing many people as he can through unforgiveness, hatred and fear. So I've had a, 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 an awesome journey, but I told everybody, the Arabi men uh, community, I'll be coming back up and uh, hopefully um, oh God, God, that I will share this in Uluru in September with the other Aboriginal elders and Torres Strait elders that, you know, I know we have to forgive for our ancestors and sins, but we also, we've got to ask forgiveness ourselves. We've got to ask forgiveness to this nation, people, uh, non-Aboriginal people. We have to ask them to forgive us. Because I said, because the truth is, all my life I've seen white people asking for forgiveness and saying sorry for what they have done to the Aboriginal people. And I think it's about time as an as Aboriginal person of this nation, we have to stand up and ask forgiveness ourselves so we can come together in unity and love. Mm -hmm. This message of God needs to be um, spread out to the whole nation of, 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 of this nation, you know, because 
it's important that this nation comes together now, you know, because I've been sharing even with my Indigenous brothers as to why are you persecuting this generation of white people for something happened 200 years ago. It has to stop, Brother John, because I don't want my grandchildren and my, and my great-grandchildren grow I don't want the next generation to grow up what I grew up in. I want my next generation to grow up in forgiveness, unity and love. And we need to do that for this next generation. You know, I'm just a servant of God. All the glory goes to him. But he has put this um, message for the nation, you know, because I've, I've been told by by a few people, even prophets, and that the Lord has ordained me as an elder of the nation. And I've been trying to work out what that means. And I believe it's what I'm doing. It's yeah. what I'm doing for God, representing the elder of the nation. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.